We've tested them and we see that the same product is capable of also binding in the gastrointestinal tract, the endotoxin. So the same product that it's protecting you against mycotoxins, we, we have been in vivo that because of some similarities in the charges of the, of the molecule of endotoxins with some of the mycotoxins, we're also capable of binding the endotoxin in the gastrointestinal tract and that way stopping it from being absorbed and from, and from uh, causing the inflammation. Practically speaking, these are, this is the best option. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested view. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Josep Garcia Serrera, the Toxin Solutions Manager at Special Nutrients. So Josep, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a brief introduction about yourself? Sure, thanks. Um, I'm a veterinarian by training from the University of Barcelona in Barcelona, Spain, and then I did uh, animal science, uh, a master and PhD in the animal science department at Mission State University, uh, and I've been basically working with the mycotoxins and in general uh, toxins for special nutrients for, well, like 16 or 17 years already, you know, so yeah, we know a, a little bit about the subject, yes. At Essential Ag, pork production is our life. We understand the real world challenges producers face, and that is why we strive to bring research-driven solutions to the industry. The team at Essential Ag is working hard every day to find and deliver innovative technologies to you because we are passionate about solving your problems. Gotcha, yeah. And obviously, based on your job title, I know you had a lot of experience with toxins as a toxin solution manager. And I've had several conversations on here about mycotoxins, which are the first thing that comes to mind when I think about toxins and swine diets. But I wanted to talk with you specifically about endotoxins. So to start, what are endotoxins and how do they differ from mycotoxins? Yeah, they are, well, the only thing that they have similar actually is the fact that they are both toxins that affect the, you know, the swine, the, the pig, the piglet, the sows. But they are, anything else, they are completely different. Mycotoxins come from fungi, you know, they are, you know, they come from fungi. Endotoxins are bacterial toxins. They are not from fungi. They Unfortunately, they cooperate with each other a little bit to, to do some harm to the animal, but the origin of the toxins have nothing to do. Ones are fungi mycotoxins, the other ones are bacterial uh, toxins. So that's, that's, the main, that's the main difference. Gotcha. And what are some of the clinical signs of an endotoxin case? And how do endotoxins mechanistically cause disease in pigs? See, endotoxins... Uh, just to you know to to understand how they work and everything the the main thing endotoxins are actually part they they have not to be confused with exotoxins which are also bacterial toxins but endotoxins or lps lipopolysaccharides is the two different names for the same for the same thing for the same molecule there are actually a, a, a molecule that are part of the gram negative bacteria exterior cell wall so they are an integral part of the bacterial cell wall they are not secreted by the bacteria if they were secreted those would be exotoxins not endotoxins endotoxins are part of the bacterial cell wall just gram negative bacteria so if you're talking gram positive does not apply endotoxins only applies gram negative bacteria and they're basically released when this cell wall gets broken, it can either be because the cells, are, the bacteria are growing, so they are dividing. So of course, when they are dividing, the, the cell, the, the cell wall breaks into into two, you know, every time. Or if we are using, for example, a treatment, an antibiotic or something, and we're actually actively trying to kill the bacteria, then of course the bacterial cell wall is destroyed and they are released. The main effect of endotoxins, if, if it can be summarized by one word, is inflammation. You know, they produce an inflammation wherever they are present. Normally, they are present in the gastrointestinal tract, in the intestine of the of the pigs or the sow, and, and they will produce an inflammation in the bacteria in the uh, gastrointestinal mucosa. Or if they are absorbed into the blood and they go to different organs or different parts of the of the blood uh, system, they will also produce a, a inflammatory reaction whatever you know whatever they are but the main definition of their of their effect is inflammation gotcha so you mentioned that antibiotics can actually cause the cell wall to burst and 
actually release those endotoxins. So can antibiotics actually work to kind of exacerbate the negative effects that endotoxins present in pigs? Yes, they, yeah, they do. They do. Actually, actually, besides inflammation, uh, another of the main, I mean, inflammation is the main effect, but, but fever is also another of the, another effect of, of uh, endotoxins. And actually, many times people, if you, if either, either pigs in this case or, or people for that matter, many times when you start taking an antibiotic or when you start, you know, applying an antibiotic, the initial, there is an initial feverish, reaction the first 24 hours or something that is precisely because we are killing the gram negative bacteria they are releasing the endotoxins and the endotoxins actually activate that fever you know that fever uh, reaction so yes initially uh, the use of antibiotics will actually produce a major release of endotoxins of course you, you are killing the source of them, you know, so that, that's the good part. So it will be only, it will be short, you know, short lived. This, this reaction, this initial reaction, it will only take 24, 48 hours. But yes, initially the use of antibiotics will produce a, an, an overload of endotoxin presence. Yes. So what different mitigation strategies are currently available for endotoxin management? When, when it comes to endotoxins, the, the, the main, there are two main problems. One, it has to do with the nature of, of the molecule itself uh, and the fact that the, the endotoxin molecule, it has a very short lifespan in the, in the body. You know, in, 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 in hours, it can vary a lot. You know, so imagine, for example, that yes, that you have a situation where you have a, a, an overload of gram-negative bacteria and you use, for example, a, an antibiotic and, and you're killing, there is an initial over release of endotoxins, even if they are absorbed into the blood, they will last sh very short in the blood. You know, just a few hours, most of them will be metabolized. Or So to, to measure endotoxin level, for example, in blood or, or, or in the feces or something, it's complicated, not because it's difficult to measure it. There are, there are laboratory tests, you know, that can measure it, but because the, the, the levels fluctuate a lot. You know, so depending on the time that the sample is taken with the same animal, it will vary a lot. That's one major problem. And the second and very important major problem is that there are no reference values. Endotoxins have been described for a long time, so they are well identified and everything, but there are no really reference values like to say, okay, if I take blood from an animal, or, you know, a pig in this case, for example, and I get whatever value, is that high, low, is that, you know, Mycotoxins, for example, we know if you get one ppm of vomitoxin in your feet, you're in trouble, you know, because that's probably the range you, you know, and above that, you may be seriously in trouble, you know. Now, endotoxin, there is no such reference value. So even if you, even if you're taking several samples, you run it by the lab test, you do a good job at measuring the actual amount, there is no, there is no value that you can compare it to give you an idea how, how the situation is. That's actually the major problem. Even, even if, even if you know you may have a problem, but to actually pinpoint how, how big that problem is, you know, that's the, the main, the main issue with, with endotoxins when it comes compared to, for example, mycotoxins, which of course the reference values are, are very well established. Gotcha. So how do we then accurately measure endotoxin exposure and its effects on swine? And what diagnostic tools are available for veterinarians and producers? To actually measure, I mean, you can, you can try to measure it and that's fine, you know, but it, it really, uh, you, 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 the best thing is actually to measure the effects of the endotoxins, not so much. You know, there is an option. There is an option that is just being developed recently. Not to measure directly endotoxins, for example, in, in blood or, or in feces, but in, in particular in blood, instead of endotoxins, to measure what it's called LBP, LPS, or endotoxin binding protein. The, the, the body, uh, as a reaction to the presence of endotoxins, generates this LBP protein. And this LBP protein, the, the levels are much more stable. You know, they, they are well related. If you have more endotoxins in blood, you will have more you know, higher LBP uh, uh, levels, but, the, but it doesn't get metabolized so easily, you know, so fast. So the levels are more, more constant, you know. So, but this is very, very uh, still new, still LBP levels. There are no reference value either yet, you know. So 
the best thing as a practical purpose is to, to check for the effects. You know, for example, endotoxins have been related Par, it's a, these, these issues are multifactorial, but are in part they are being related to problems. You know, for example, post-winning diarrhea, uh, the, what the SIM syndrome. You know, the, the swine inflammation and necrotic symptom we, uh, syndrome. We know that some of it is due to endotoxin action. So, if you see some of these effects of the endotoxins, it may give you a, a pretty good indication that yes, that you do have a, a, an endotoxin issue. So my final question I have for you is, what strategies do we have available to kind of control those endotoxins? Yeah, there, there's been uh, some attempts to do like vaccines, you know, against endotoxins, but those are costly and they are for practical purposes. They are, they are being used in some cases for humans, you know, because humans can also be exposed. But for practical purposes for animal production, swine production, they are not practical, too expensive and now, recently, some uh, mycotoxin binders, for example, you know, the, the one that my company supplies, you know, in the case of Protect Aid, they, they actually, we, we've tested them and we see that the same product is capable of also binding in the gastrointestinal tract, the endotoxin. So the same product that it's protecting you against mycotoxins, we, we have been in vivo that because of some similarities in the charges of the, of the molecule of endotoxins with some of the mycotoxins, we are also capable of binding the endotoxin in the gastrointestinal tract and that way stopping it from being absorbed and from, and from uh, causing the inflammation. Practically speaking, these are, this is the best option for animal production. You eh? use some product with a proven record of being capable of absorbing the molecule before it does the damage and then excreting it in the, in the feces. That would be the best, the best option. Yeah, it's always nice when you can get two birds with one stone, but I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Joseph, for coming on the show and sharing all this with us. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.